Okay, I'm going to run through my commons that I got today. Obviously, it's a big stack, and common cards are not very interesting, so I'm going to try to be as quick as I can. But nobody said you had to watch it. Okay, uh, Amphen Cutthroat doesn't do anything, just a big, mean creature. Angel's Mercy, not bad. Gain 7 life for 4 mana. Arachnus Web basically incapacitates a creature. This is a pretty useful card. I think I would probably play with that. Uh, Armored Warhorse. I got two of these. Lucky me. Uh, this is Salt Griffin. Um, you know, just a regular flying creature. Not very interesting, but useful. This I like. You get to uh, get an enchantment back, assuming that you have an enchantment in your graveyard. Um, which would only happen, really, if an enchantment was disenchanted or a one of your creatures with an enchantment on it was destroyed. But anyway, it could be useful. Not blowing me away, but, yeah, this, I, I actually, I, I should mention, I like the artwork here. It kind of reminds me of the old Quentin Hoover artwork from the revised set. Um, it's not Quentin Hoover. It looks like watercolors as opposed to whatever he, I think he used pencil. Um, Rebecca Guay. Anyway. Uh, Blood Ogre, just, you know, kind of run-of-the-mill red creature with a couple of abilities. I like this one, though. Bloodseeker. Um... That's a nice little effect. As long as this card is in play, you a player, you know, an opponent loses life whenever he plays a creature card, which is, you know, that's pretty useful. Um, I got some of these Blood Rage Vampires, you know, nice utility players, 3-1, Bloodthirst. Bonebreaker Giant, big, boring, strong red creature. Brindle Boar, I like this conceptually. You can eat it and get four life, hence the... Uh, color text. That's pretty funny, actually. Chasm Drake. Um, this is kind of cool. In addition to flying, it also can carry one of your people, which I think is neat. Uh, Child of Night, just, you know, that lifelink ability again, which I like. I like, I like the, the, the kind of vampire themology. Themology, is that even a freaking word? Probably not. This vampire motif I support um, in the magic universe. Coral Merfolk, is there anything more boring in the Magic Universe than Merfolk? Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, 1-1 one, one creature for 1 mana, and a color that is completely not creature-based. And these guys, 1 extra power for 1 extra mana. They don't really do anything else, unless you have one that you're not... You know, I guess you have a, if you have a Lord of Atlantis, if you're that boring, that you're playing Lord of Atlantis, and a bunch of Merfolk in your blue deck, um, which should just be a bunch of interrupts and instant. I guess I don't have any interrupts anymore, but you know what I mean. This is a boring card, and I don't like more folk. Demystify. This is just Disenchant with a different name. I don't know why they changed the name, but nobody asked me. Divination. Draw two cards. Very cool card, and I like that one. Dusk Hunter back. I managed to get four of these in my limited purchase today. Um, just a flying creature with bloodthirst. This is a really cool card. Fiery Hellhound. Um... You know, fire breathing, not too expensive, starts out nominally strong. Definitely a good card to play if you're playing a red deck. Frost Breath, this is cool. You freeze two of your opponent's cards. I think that's very useful. Or, uh, creatures, I think that's very useful. And I would totally play that one. Giant Spider, nice to see this guy come back from the old revised set. Um, and I'm glad that they gave a name to the ability of a non flying creature that can block flying creatures. Uh, it always made a lot of sense that the flying, that the giant spider could do that because it had a web. Um, I don't know what other creatures they have do that. Uh, perhaps if I buy more cards, I will find some more. Glade Cover Scout, just a boring elf. Um, got a lot of fun little uh, goblin cards here. I like this goblin fire slinger. It's basically a red version of the prodigal sorcerer. Um, I got three of those. That's a, this is a perfect card for a goblin direct damage deck, and I would totally play with this. Goblin Piker, Goblin Tunneler, fun, fun, little goblin cards. I approve. Minotaurs. Um, this Bloodthirst, <laughs> I'm starting to think that's a little overused ability in this set. I mean, it seems like every other freaking card I look at has Bloodthirst. Um, but whatever, you know, it's just a big, mean creature. Uh, Griffin Rider, this is Foil. I'm supposed to be excited about. I also have a non-foil version. And again, this is one of those cards that, um, you know, depends on having other types of cards in play to get an ability. Right now, you know, 
99% of the time, unless you have a whole bunch of griffins in your deck, this is going to be just a you know, really expensive 1-1 one -one card. And, of course, if you have this griffin sentinel in play, um, you know, it gets the ability. But I just, I don't like, you know, it's, it's, it's too much effort for me to build my deck around a particular type of creature. I'd rather just have creatures that stand alone and, um, you know, have their own abilities regardless of what else is in play. <clears throat> Bog rats always bothered me as a young player because I never had enough bog rats to make them worthwhile. Well, look up bog rats if you don't know what they are. I'm not going to explain them to you. Harbor serpent, a uh, big boring creature with the high mana cost. Those just don't win games, folks. They do not win games. Hideous visage. I think this is an adaptation of an old Fallen Empires card that I think was called Grim Visage or something. And they actually changed it a little bit. In the old version, it was um, the creature could only be blocked by artifact creatures and black creatures, with the theory being that black creatures could not be afraid. And um, <clears throat> so this, you know, share a color version conceptually isn't as satisfying to me because I like the idea of these, you know black creatures that were incapable of fear. Anyway, nobody asked me. Ice Cage, this is basically a blue version of that spider web card with a little slightly different way of uh, dissolving it. Okay, Incinerate. This, along with Shock, which you will see later, worries me. I am worried that Lightning Bolt is no longer in the core set, which would be very bad, because Lightning Bolt was a very good card. It was one red mana and deal three damage to any object. This is two mana, deal three damage three damage to any, to any target, and it has this extra, you know, no regeneration feature, which I think is useless 99% of the time, because, at least when I was playing, there were, there were actually very few regeneration effects available, unless you were playing, you know, a committed zombie deck. Uh, so, that is troubling. I would grudgingly play that in my direct damage deck. Lifelink, as I said, I like the lifelink effect, so I would definitely play with these. Lightning Elemental, this is a fun little card. It's basically, you know, it's basically a direct damage kind of thing. It's You play it, you attack with it, it's probably going to get blocked and killed. Um, it's probably not going to last long. If it doesn't get blocked, because it only has one toughness, obviously you can enchant it and put things on it to make it more tough, but that's not always going to be able to do that. Mana Leak, um, just, you know, typical blue mess with the other side card. Um, in a future video, perhaps, I will explain my philosophy as to the colors and why I don't like blue very much, and this is just a kind of a quintessential blue card. Manic Vandal is fun. Destroy an artifact as it comes in. Pacifism. This is a really cool card. You basically take a um, you take a creature completely out of commission. I guess if it has abilities, it can do the abilities, but it can't attack or block. Phantasm. I guess this is one of those illusion cards that my Lord of Illusion and my rare stack... Was that? Yes, Lord of the Unreal, excuse me, um, would actually benefit. But again, it's not, you know, I don't want to have to load up my deck with phantasmal bears to make my Lord of Illusion or Lord of the Unreal useful to me. So, it's dumb. Ponder, this is a cool card. This is kind of an old throwback to the old, um, uh, you know, the old cards you get to look at your library and pick out whatever card you want. This is a nice little card, and I would totally play that. <coughs> Only one mana, which I think is, makes it better than... Um, some of those other cards where you get to draw cards. Pride Guardian, a big scary lion that does not attack. I like that they give you three life, so that's pretty cool. 